when we go in with our planning application, mm. we need to be sure that what we get planning for is implementable. Yeah. That we don't have to go back to amend the planning afterwards because licensing have told us something else. Mm. So you will need to be looking at two main areas of rules when you go in to do your HMA, for instance. So you'll need to be looking at um, what the planning rules are and what the housing rules are. Now, the housing department will usually produce some sort of guide, which is related to the Housing Acts, right. on bedroom sizes, um, how big a single um, occupancy room needs to be, how big a double occupancy room needs to be. There are different rules and different sizes depending upon whether or not there are kitchens or ensuite bathrooms, etc. Yep. How big the kitchen or dining area needs to be depending upon whether or not there's going to be a living room and so on and so forth. Yep. Uh, how many um, rooms need to be sharing a bathroom or a, w or, or a, or a, or a toilet um, or dining areas as well, or kitchen areas, and how many floors away from those facilities they need to be. So the rules can be very, very complex. They need to, there's often rules about, as well, how big the windows need to be, yeah. um, whether or not you know they, they need to be um, at least one-tenth of the area, or one twenty, uh, usually about one-tenth of the area of the floor space in a room, and the openable area needs to be of the window needs yeah. to be roughly at least one twentieth of the area. So and there needs it, to be fire escapes. There needs sometimes, to be fire so. escapes as well. So <clears throat> you need to be looking uh, at this very carefully because, for instance, let's say that you have a corridor that leads into a kitchen and dining area, um, but the corridor also can lead directly into bedrooms. But you have a bedroom as well. We have this in our case as mm. well. You have a bedroom which is not accessed off the corridor, it's accessed through going through the kitchen and dining area. Now think about it, if that kitchen dining area catches fire... You can't get out. You can't get out. So um, there are rules that allow you to have the bedroom behind the kitchen dining area in that case, but it depends upon what fire exit provisions there are, whether or not you can get through the window, how far you are off the ground, and so on and so forth. So um, there are rules that you have to work through. It's about asking the right questions beforehand. Mm. Your planning consultant, for instance me, I know the rules about the planning and what we have to ask to the planning department. Yeah. I can also go through, and many planning consultants will do this, they will go through and check against the housing rules also whether or not what the plans show complies and ticks the right boxes. But there's a lot of stuff about fire safety and building regulations. And that's where you want to be leveraging the experience and knowledge of your architect. Yeah. Because when architects qualify, they, they, are, they learn a little bit about planning, they learn a bit about this and design and mm. so on and so forth. But um, they will know an awful lot more about building regs and fire uh, safety yeah. than the planning uh, consultant will do as well. So you want to be asking them those questions. Mm. So... Um, We've gone in with an application for planning to change the three flats into three separate HMOs. So there's four bedrooms in one, there's six bedrooms right. in another, and six bedrooms in another as well. So what we have was we had two bedrooms in each of those three flats. So that was a total of up to 12 people between three flats. We've now got a total of up to 16 people possibly, between what used to be three flats, now split over those. We might go in for another application to extend afterwards and get in more people. Um, so we're doing it in stages, and we're cutting it down in that way. But we've done one exercise for planning. We've done one exercise for housing and licensing. Yeah. We made sure that while putting the plans together, there's cross-referencing and those that do, the due diligence on both of those speak to each other. Yeah. Um, and in some parts of the country, before you're going to go in for your application for planning permission, it's worth speaking to the housing team. So that will be the private sector housing team or the private sector housing service. Right. That's who you want to be asking for at Switchboard. So you'll speak to them um, and... 
what we did, for instance, in Brent um, with another application was we put in an application and before we did so, we sent the floor plans over to an officer I'd spoken to at the private sector housing team. They said, yes, happy to look at the floor plans, see if they tick the right boxes, see if they comply, and then um, we'll tell you whether or not you need to make any changes. Yeah. Now, that saves a lot of time because if you go with an application and you don't find that out afterwards and you have to make those changes, it delays the application because then the officers and the planning team have to reconsult on changes yeah. to those plans. So that's your, you, that delays your refinancing it? Exactly, it yeah. holds things back yeah. and you yeah. might not be able to get the application through within the time that you wanted. Yeah. So making those changes before the plans go in mm. mean that you're making the best use of time yeah. and there's no, st there's no statutory delay, uh, legal delay at the council level yeah. in the planning department. Um, and also we send plans through, in some councils where they don't provide that advanced service, we'll send the plans through to the private sector housing team at the same time we make the application. Because when a planning application goes in, there's usually a delay of about one to two weeks yeah. before anybody sees it, because it's going through the uh, registration processes and they're setting up their physical file, handing it over to an officer, so on and so forth. So in that time, while all that's sort of going on in terms of the admin, nobody in the private sector housing team has seen anything. Right. So we're sending the documents over to the private sector housing team at the same time, so we're making the best use of that time. Yeah. If they then say, well, you need to make changes here or there, we'll change the plans, send it over to the planning team, and say, by the way, place these plans on your file instead of the ones that you had. Right. So it's you both had. happening so at the same time. It's happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll catch it early.